Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the last Monday morning from my office, uh, which is uh, going to be changing for the next five weeks. I will be on the road. So I've been madly yesterday um, doing my best to pack for five weeks. Um, so um, that I can go to Queensland, Sydney. Hang on a second. I'm going to try to get uh, Renee on. Let's have a look. Okay. So we're about to do an interview with the gorgeous Renee Hasseldine. Good morning. Uh, great to see you guys. Hey, it's working. You're here. I'm going to turn it up your way so we can actually. <laughs> Hang on, you're upside down now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm just gonna find a position that I can hold it. Yeah, I've kind of hung my phone over my desktop, um, and uh, the case is holding it on yeah. at the right level. Yeah, see that would work. Good, Good morning, guys. Great to have you on the call. Um, hope you all had a wonderful weekend. While Renee is getting herself set. Oh, there you go. That looks really good. That looks really good. There you go. Oh, awesome. yeah, and we can sit back. Hang on, let me just adjust where my head the head is sitting in the picture. <laughs> awesome. So, how's your weekend? Oh, fantastic. Thanks. Good morning, Nat. Um, yeah, it was um, hubby's birthday last week, so we had this birthday extravaganza weekend. Oh. We had the overnight stay in the city, and um, so you know. A, hotel in the CBD, we went to the theatre, we went out for dinner, and Sunday morning we did an escape room. <gasps> what happened? Have you ever done it? No. Oh my god, you've got to do it. It's the best fun ever. Really? So you get locked in a room and you've got to solve these puzzles to escape. Oh, okay, you've got to tell me about that, yes. So you do it with yeah. obviously the best person to do it with is your partner and you have a bit of fun doing that. Well, yeah, because you can, well, you can do it as like a team building thing with your team. So it's a yeah. cool thing to do for a business building thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but escape room. But yeah, I, like, yeah, we did it as a, you know, a date thing to do. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was really cool. Awesome. All right. Well, it's a good little adventure to have. Um, uh, on, uh, on that, I think we should do with our hubbies one day. Yeah, Amy, let's make it a, like, yeah, double date. <laughs> So let's have this I'm like, if anyone wants to do escape rooms, please invite me. I want to do it every day. I oh, was, it's okay. my idea of the best fun. Cool, cool. I'm a nerd right. though, so maybe it's nerdy for some people. Yeah, no, I, I think it would be a little challenge. It makes you think, yeah? It really, really makes you think. And we got out with 30 seconds to spare because there's oh. a time limit, right? Yeah. And, and like the last three minutes, we're like, oh, my God, three minutes to go. <laughs> And then we got 30 seconds and I was just like, yes! <laughs> Let's do it. I can't wait. Well, Amy, myself, and Renee all live in the same area. Here yes, in Amy, Melbourne. I'm in. I'm totally in. Yeah, cool. Okay, love it. Um, all right, so let's, I think a few people have joined. So good morning to everyone. Lots of good mornings have been coming up. Uh, let's get into the awesome uh, wisdom that this woman's got to share with us because I recently spent uh, half a day with her in her half day workshop and have known of her and been in the same community for a little while now. So I thought, you know, before I hit the road for five weeks, I'll let someone else take the charge this morning and give <laughs> us some gold nuggets and wisdom. So let me give you the official introduction here that I have of Renee and then I'm going to uh, let her, you know, uh, uh, give us some wisdom around uh, her expertise. All right, so I'm just going to read from this little bit uh, of paper. So Renee has a line works with coaches and thought leaders to turn what is in their brilliant minds into powerful signature systems use, using visual models. Her knack for extracting and unpacking thoughts and turning them into unique intellectual property is sheer genius. Yeah. Uh, Renee is the author of the best-selling book, uh, Share Your Passion. She's the host of the Leveraged and Loving It podcast, which I've been a guest on recently. And yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And a panel member on the Business Playroom TV. She's also a regular contributor to both Smallville and the Huffington Post. Renee is passion personified. Be prepared for it. Be prepared to be empowered this morning. All right, guys. So, um, and the unofficial obviously introduction was that um, I experienced what Renee's uh, zone of genius is, as she likes to call it, um, the other week in Eltham uh, at her half-day workshop and walked away 
and uh, did some amazing things with the wisdom that she taught me. And um, and I loved um, how you framed, um, you know, we, we look to create quality, but our standard is not perfectionism, which was one little snippet because I'm all about not being perfect in business and about doing um, things, you know, the best you can, but let it go and keep keep moving on because you can keep tweaking it. So, Renee, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your day and rushing back from school drop-off um, to be on the call this morning. Um, tell us, um, maybe give us a little bit first of all, let's start with a little bit of a brief overview. I mean, you've been in business for over 20 years, so give us maybe where it started off and you know, yeah. a two-minute yeah. version of your story. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... In, in one form of another in, in my business life, I've always, I've always worked with people who have big, brilliant ideas and really creative entrepreneurial minds. Yeah. And my role in some form of another has always been to take that, like all their ideas and the things that they say and then make them tangible and visible. Like, so in many different ways I have made that happen. Um, and, and now the way that I've refined that down and what my zone of genius really is, is to take all that hot air. Like, you know, you sell when we're, when we're experts in service based businesses, we're selling hot air, right? So I take that hot air and make it tangible and visible. And, um, and I do that by turning the way that people work with their clients into visual models. Um, yeah. And that's, and, and I just love doing that. I get super excited about it. Almost as excited as an escape room. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And um, uh, if you could, um, you know, sort of summarize a little bit about, I mean, you're, you're also a mum of two. And another thing that I took away is you're all about leverage, which is why we, uh, we kind of really got to know each other properly once I attended your half day, understanding where we were very complementary to what we were doing for our clients. Um, yeah. you know, and I love the, also the fact that you think about the bigger leverage of the business. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I, um, I have two kids, as you said, and I've just dropped them off at school mm -hmm. a few minutes early. So I can back on time. And mm -hmm. so for me, leverage is about working smarter, not harder and, um, making more money in less time. So I work during school hours, during school terms, which means I get 12 weeks off a year. And the way that I can do that is by taking my signature system and using that to work one to many with my clients. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Ultimately, that's what you want everyone to be doing it, doing because it is, we start in business to have a lifestyle, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and we find, yeah, we, we start off with that whole passion and start up mode. We're super excited and Whoa, yeah, all the passion's high. And then, had this massive learning curve and realized it's a lot more work than we imagined. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there can be a bit of a reality check of, holy crap, I didn't know I had to do everything. And what is this marketing and sales and all these other things that I didn't even imagine. I thought I was just going to be doing all the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's all that stuff that happens. And then, you know, we can get, we get to the point in our business as a service-based owner where working one-on-one, -on -one, we kind of hit a bit of a ceiling there are yes. only so many hours a day and yes. that's where um and me being a, a big kind of if you like i don't know it's like a business junkie but i'm always looking for um like i was always looking for the next big hit in my business yes. of like where's my next passion hit going to come from and so i would often just start again when i get to that maxed out stage yes um but, but yeah, coming through and, and turning and turning what I know into a signature system, which is what I was doing for everyone else yes. um, and transforming that helped me to actually now create leverage for myself. So yeah, yeah. it's, I love how it's so much in business. business. Uh, you end up helping other people do it and then you realize you haven't been doing it for yourself. <laughs> um, but really the stuff that you've been doing for other people is the system that ultimately should yeah. be leveraged and systemized. And I think you've got that brain that is able to decipher what someone's steps are, you know. So tell people what, what are visual models? Like, I mean, I know now that I've been at your event, right? Um, yes. they, they might hear like, what do you mean by visual models and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. So there are four kind of four key models that someone needs to make up their signature system. And when I say a visual model, so imagine um, just say you've got a five-step process. Imagine that 
you've got those five steps in a picture with some arrows on it. So it's a very mm. simply just graphic way. You know, you might call it an infographic, but a visual way of showing some information. Mm. Um, yeah. And there are four key models that, that we use to make up a signature system. And the first one is um, your success model. So what are the key ingredients your clients need to master to achieve success? So mm. that's the first one. Yes. The second one is an educate model. And that's what if your client starts out with this problem over here and they want to get to this solution over here, mm -hmm. what are all the steps to take? What are all the things they need to do to get from A to Z? Yeah. So that's all about the doing and the action. Um, yeah. And so that lays out your roadmap and the way that your client gets from A to Z. Um, yeah. The third type is the excite model. And that's probably one of my favorites because that's, it's almost like, it's like the hero's journey. It's like, what is the journey your client is on? Um, you know, from the beginning of the story all the way to the end where they want to yeah. end up. And it's, it's telling a story and it's emotive and it's exciting so that people can identify where they're up to and, and where they want to be as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and often then they identify you as the expert, uh, as the person to help them get there faster. So yeah. that's kind of the point of the site model. And then the fourth one is the yes model, which is all about showing them the benefits and having them saying yes to working with you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the four. And so there's four different types of information there. And um, it's important to kind of distill your information into those four different types of models. Otherwise, you end up with – when people send me stuff when they've had a go at doing it, they often just put everything they know into one model and it kind of looks a bit like a dog's breakfast. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's important to kind of group it into those four different types. I love it. And I had a play with it all and um, and I have implemented them into my half-day presentation and makes the uh, making the offer so much easier and that's what I it's almost you end up with a pitch script in a way uh, okay. that is that flows from one thing to the other and paints the full story through those four models yeah 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 absolutely so I was I wanted to ask you actually because I know after the half day you created all your models and you changed all your slides for your half day workshop you've run that a few times now haven't you I did three times last week and um, I have to say, uh, it, I'm finishing 10 minutes early, which is awesome because I was struggling to finish on time uh, with the way the slides were before I saw you. So after I saw Renee guys about three weeks ago at her half day workshop, I went back and actually ripped apart my whole half day presentation. And you're talk we're talking about moving from 50 slides now to 90, yet because the models build from one to the other, that's why you need the extra slides. Uh, but it actually made everything a lot neater and visually more appealing, um, which yeah. made me go through the presentation a lot faster. Obviously, I removed some things that, um, uh, that you know, that I thought, oh, I'm not going to talk about that anymore, all that, all that kind of stuff. And then I refined it. Then actually, you gave me an awesome tip um, when we had a bit of a chat to organize ourselves for this morning. Uh, you yep. saw that my, um, what is it, the yes model? was uh could be re uh, replaced by one other thing that i talk about in my half day so i replaced that and i redid the four, one of my models from one to the other uh, but i used right. a picture of um what i had for, to represent what i would talk throughout the day in the workshop so um it wasn't a model it was just almost a visual presentation of what i would cover so the, the feedback from uh i guess playing at, uh, uh with them last week and this week i mean tomorrow the next three days will be again uh, another three lots of use of this new PowerPoint presentation. And it's been really good, the feedback from um, people who've come to the event um, and the people who've been crewing for me. See, they've seen my previous presentation because they've crewed yeah, me in the past. Ever before and, after. and now it's like everything looks different and new and, um, and, you know, and it looks more professional. What you said also in that workshop when we were together, uh, when I was learning from you, um, is a lot of people get the business uh, because it has that structure and really clear set, like with the models. Can you tell me a little bit of, about an example? I think you had a story of a guy you shared. What was his story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and this is yeah one of the big things that I love about taking what's in your head and turning into visual models is it gives you that element of professionalism. Yeah. And, you know, now you have amazing success and, you know, you've earned authority and credibility through everything that you've already done. Um, but it's a, it's a small tweak um, in yeah. the system that kind of takes it to the next level. And so an example of this is um, one of my clients, Andrew Wiggleton, who I worked with early last year to create his visual models. Yeah. And he had 24 years experience 
um, in New Zealand on stage and screen. Um, he's, you know, and as, as a presenting coach now, you know, he pitched for a real estate agent job nationally in New Zealand and he won the contract and he asked them for some feedback and said, you know, well, can you tell me why I won the contract? Because lots of other people had also pitched. And, and um, the feedback he got was because you had a model. And that kind of, in a way, it shocked me, even though I know how powerful this stuff is, yeah. because Andrew Eggleton before the models and Andrew Eggleton after the models equally <laughs> deserved that contract. The yeah. only thing that changed is the perception of the client. And yeah. so it really, really helps to get those big contracts over the line and helps clients to see what is actually inside your brain that is so amazing. Yeah, amazing. I'm going to flick back to some questions that came up while we were talking. Uh, <laughs> Megan said missed the first model, which was the success model. Success wasn't it? model, yep. So can you explain? Yeah, so the success model, success model, Megan, is um, the, what are the key ingredients that your clients need to master to achieve success? Yeah, beautiful. Um, Samit, he says uh, about models, can you share some slides? Well, Samit, um, Renee does a full half-day event that she teaches this properly. I mean, you really need to sit through the whole four hours to fully understand. And even then some, I mean, as you said, I have been in business for a long time. I know my business inside out and I could almost smash it out while I'm talking. Like you're, you're presenting and I'm kind of trying to rejig this for myself in terms of what. So I'm reading between the lines because I know my intellectual property and also because my zone of genius as well similar to yourself is organizing information which is because that's why we yeah. help people write their books and all that so that's yeah, exactly. why i do it but if i hadn't been who i am i would be doing then your, your further two-day uh master class workshop um whatever you want to, uh, authority accelerator right that's right, I, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, authority accelerator. yeah we just finished we just finished the september round on uh, on friday Awesome. Oh, amazing. And, and I see, saw so many examples. So not every uh, business is going to have the same visual model or, or the imagery of oh, what they okay. represent. You want to link it to your brand. Is that right? Like, tell us. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So the visual models can, should, um, they tell a story and, um, and, and you, they're a metaphor. So, and they, you want them to be on brand. They need yeah. to be, you know, the colors, the fonts, the essence of the brand, you know, it needs to all come through in your models. And even if, you know, you as a, um, as a book mentor and another book mentor who, you yeah. know, you still, even if you both create a signature system, yeah. they're going to be completely different because right. the way you do it is different to how someone else does it. And, and so it's a way of actually showing your point of difference and differentiation yeah. and really just highlighting your way. And so people are either going to resonate with that or not. Um, and it just is, and it really helps to filter and help people to make that decision really, really clearly. So, yeah, you want those models. Everyone's model should look different. Um, there's no sort of cookie cutter approach to it at all. Um, yeah, they really need to be on brand and representing your business in the best possible yeah. light. So, And that's why, you know, you guys, you've got the whole team that creates them. So you walk away with all of them. Uh, once you have yeah. gone through, but you really, I guess, need to start at that four hour event to understand what this half an hour of VC Live is trying to portray and, um, you know, um, add value to you guys. But l literally, you know, if Renee could have told me what she did like this right now, and I still wouldn't have gotten it. It's the same thing with my uh, clients, Renee. Um, they often can judge or, or think they're going to understand what they're going to receive through my half day event. Uh, yet, once they sit through those four hours, the full picture is really um, painted and people can get uh, and then have, a, um, I guess, make an informed decision whether they want to go and solve this properly for themselves or just do nothing about it. Um, I love what Jono said, um, uh, one of my authors, um, he says, there's three ways to, do, uh, to solve a problem. The easy way where you get to pay someone and, um, and get them to show you and teach you the hard way is, um, you know, you try to do it yourself by trial and error. And the tragic way, and that is you do nothing about it. Yeah. I love and, that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool one. Now, I mean, he said it a couple of times now. And I said, you know what, I need to use that one because it's so true. Uh, whenever I've, um, you know, when I was cash poor time rich, of course, I did a lot of things, trial and error, myself, all that kind of stuff. 
but as you know, when I could reinvest into the business, of course, I'm not going to waste time. Um, and as you say, I want to get to the leverage point ASAP. Um, tell us, um, you talk about sometimes if some of these guys who are um, watching are working one on one and they want to leverage one too many, there's also a time where you go down in revenue because you, you've got uh, the model that explains that. Why is yeah, it that you would go down in revenue if you move from one on one to one to many? Yeah, that, it's a really good point. Thanks, Kat. So, yeah, when, when you max out at one-on-one -on -one with your clients and, you know, you've reached that point, it's an income ceiling because there are only so many yeah. hours in the day. If you yeah. want to then leverage up into working one-to-many with your clients, the stage in between, which I call transition, you actually do have a dip in your income. And the reason that happens is because you go into this um, development stage. You need to actually start developing your products and and shifting them so that they will work in a one-to-many scenario because um, getting results for clients one-to-many is much harder than getting results one-on-one. -on -one. And so you really need to make sure that you've, you up-level everything in that stage. And so that takes an investment of time, energy, and money. And so yeah. while you're focusing your energy and your time onto that, of course, your income from your one-on-one -on -one clients will start to drop off a bit as you direct your energy. Um, and it's totally normal. I see it happen every single time with my clients. They're going through that dip. Yes. But because you know, that's part of the journey and I can put that in my Excite model, um, and this is, you know, what I encourage people to do in their Excite model to show the key performance indicators, the KPIs, because if money gets, you know, if something that's important to your clients gets worse before it get, gets better along yeah. the journey, it's great to be able to point that out beforehand so they don't freak out so they can see that this is a normal part of the process, that they're not broken, the system's not broken. It's just, it's a normal experience. Um, and that helps to give them that certainty and reassurance along the journey that everything's going to be okay. This yeah. is normal. If, you know, we just, as, as long as we progress through this, then we can actually um, make it through to the other side. Yes, Amy, it's the dip. <laughs> the dip, it's so true. It happens every time in scaling and leveraging and people freak out. They yeah. think, you know, oh, my God, it's not going to work for me. But it actually will if you, you know, keep Allow. going forward and not freak out and then end up going back to startup mode because you think I've got to reinvent the wheel now. Or yeah. you just go and find more one-on-one -on -one clients which take up a lot more of your time and then therefore because you're kind of going, oh, it, so you've got to plan for it, uh, understand okay. that it's going to happen and then, um, you know, put all your heart and soul into it because I know I was forced uh, out of one-on-one -on -one when I was having my third baby and I said there's no way I can juggle still one-on-one -on -one with this many kids and um and i had so for a while i did my retreats and continued to do business coaching and mentoring side by side but it is you know so time consuming and it's a whole different mindset from doing the one type of servicing clients to the other and when i did do it um and said no more one-on-one -on -one, and literally said no to every person that asked me for one-on-one -on -one, and then just kept focusing on filling my workshops and events and and doing my home programs and getting better and more streamlined in that system, um, then yeah. things shifted and obviously then you go, uh, you skyrocket right through the roof, you know. So that's that's where you're full leverage. So uh, so part of what you do, you you show people what that this would look like for them. Yeah. So um, and in the Authority Accelerator program, we actually the whole purpose of it is that we shorten that dip period. We yeah. we make it. We make it as short as possible and fast track it so that, um, you know, you can actually get through it um, faster and rather than drag it out. And so going back to, you know, what you said about, you know, John, I saying three ways to do it. So there's, you know, tra the tragic do nothing, which is often people see the dip and then they freak out and then go back. And so they end up doing nothing and not pushing through the dip. Yeah. Um, or, or they do trial and error and they try to work it out on their own, which will may actually take longer yeah, trying to work like that out. Cost you more um, money. Oh. And cost you more money and take longer. Like you, if you're going to be in the dip, the smartest mm -hmm. thing to do is actually work with someone to get through the dip super fast. Yeah. Um, and my clients do it in two days. Like that's how yeah. fast we do it at the Authority Accelerator. And then my, yeah. and so we extract the models, we create it all, we do, we map out the products and, you know, and then my team does all the rest of the work. So you can go back to earning money. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, while my team does, creates all the, all the stuff for you. So, yeah. Um, I don't know how you can get it faster than that. Like, that's the fastest dip ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, I love it. And, um, yeah, the, the thing is to persist. One thing I have always said is um, 
though if you are going to invest in someone to help you through a fast tracking um, a strategy getting a solution to a problem you must commit to also doing the work because it's not just you that does you know like people we say we we'll take care of you end to end for writing a book but you still have a, pl- a part to play in this and you've got to go and use it and you like me you know i walked away three days later i didn't waste my half day time that i separated um to uh, to learn from you but as soon as i got home i literally was at the computer uh refining rejigging the next four days i had redone my whole powerpoint presentation i had my visual modules tested them last week i mean i literally have turned all this around in a 14 day period since being at your uh, workshop right uh i'm a big action taker and, and you should not people shouldn't compare themselves to us or what we do but the, at the very least if you're going to invest in an expert do what they say do the homework go out there test and measure and keep um refining and those, making those micro adjustments because just yeah. because you pay money to someone ain't going to solve the problem just just because you've invested and that's a big mistake so i see is that true mm-hmm. oh. true so true because there are so many you know it it can be easy for us to fall into this you know and you know and i'm sure you probably went through this earlier on in your business career as well as where we kind of we go to all the different people looking for the answers and you know i become you know i've been through stages where i've been a bit of a course junkie and a workshop junkie and going yeah. along and like looking for the next looking for the silver bullets almost and yeah. yeah going along looking for those things and hoping that was going to be the thing but but yeah that's right there's all this homework if you don't go and implement it later then it's it's worth nothing it's nothing's exactly. going to change so, and that's yeah. the thing i believe you still need uh the journey of say zero to three years which can be heavy on seminars and education or getting mentorships and all that i think everyone goes through that uh if we all look at our journey if you haven't gone through it you're probably wasting a ton of time uh to be monetizing your business and all that kind of stuff so you should do it and i believe in every business you need a number of mentors or a number of solutions to different problems to yeah. ultimately arrive at your need package of what your thing is right uh to uh, testing and measuring and um and i uh, you know it's not just my my clients don't uh, become successful just because they have written the book of course they need th- people like yourself they need people like francesca who uh, learn teaches them how to fill their room so same as me like you know you know i've learned from you i've learned how to set up an ever bring a uh, webinar funnel through clients on demand i've had my one on one mentors i've had many people who have made and molded me into the person and the business that it is today right and that's yes, but the thing i always believe is if you're going to commit to one mentor do the journey do the work get your roi i always push no matter what time or money i have invested at the very least i'll go hard at it until i get at least two or three times return on investment if not more ultimately in in the high side most all if not all the programs there's been 10 to 20 times return on investment uh, um yeah it's actually so no, thanks actually <laughs> yeah, i love it so what's one hot tip um you know you from what you know um about all of these signature systems and visual models or well, the one thing that you would share with the listeners that would add the most value um you know and of course I'll get you to tell us you know when your next half day is um in in Melbourne or around the country I don't know you're doing another national uh, another few things I'm doing I've got up. one more national tour this year so um October November is the next national tour and I'm actually going to go to Adelaide yeah Melbourne um and online so yeah awesome yeah yeah okay so tell us on hot tip and then you can tell us about where the national tour is happening and all that So I would actually say um for all the people who are already working one on one with their clients to start working towards creating your signature system is to start making notes of the process that you're working with on those one on one clients intuitively because often in one on one situation we we do kind of it's it, it's it is an intuitive kind of flexible way of working so start actually documenting with each client when they start working with you what's the first thing that they do and then what's the next thing you do and what's the next thing you do and do that for all your clients and you'll start to actually notice that there is a pattern yeah. there is a pattern emerging that you can start to then turn into a system oh, awesome stevie my general manager just put the link for the half to the in there you rock stevie <laughs> i love it 
Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so I think you can start to to even if you're you know not quite ready to scale up in your business, you can start to work towards a signature system, knowing like begin with the end in mind, knowing that that's going to come to start documenting and noticing the patterns that are already happening. Yeah, I know. I was told that by my mentor, my very first mentor, Peter, uh, when I was um, starting to get asked about how do you help people lose the last in kilos and whatever. And he said to me, Nat, just document what do you do in session one? What do you do in session two? What do you do in session three? Because there must be something that you're repetitive of doing. You don't just rock up and just talk about whatever, you know, is on your mind on that day. And it was true. There was. I started doing things very systematically. And I spent a couple of hours every a week uh, just documenting steps, how I found clients, where I marketed, how I marketed, what I did and all that sort of stuff. So he um, got me to do that. So when it was time to license my intellectual property for the weight loss business, I already had yep. it all down on, on files. All I had to do is uh, pull together the manuals and everything like that. But as you say, from those manuals, there is obviously an overarching system uh, that can be turned yeah. into a visual model. Um, and that's yeah. the thing. So you really got to pay attention. I think some people can be very random, but don't take, it's not random. If there is a way that you are doing it that's unique to you, yeah? And it's often intuitive because, you know, if it's our zone of genius, it's our natural flow. It's just the way that we work. And we yes. don't think about it necessarily as a system because it just comes naturally to us. Yes. So, but when you start to document it, you'll see that actually you do have a process that comes yes. to you naturally. Um, yes. You just haven't turned it into an official system yet. Um, and that's what and, people and, buy. At the end of the day, people buy yeah. a system. So you've got to be uh, mindful. They don't buy fluff. They don't buy life coaching or anyone that just calls themselves a coach. They buy a no solution to a problem in which can be communicated yeah. as a system. And then kind of they go, okay, there's a starting point. There's an ending point. They don't buy when there is like, you know, oh, we're just going to work together and we're going to make you feel much, much better about yourself and your business. No. You gotta have something that seems tangible, even if it's intangible. That's right. Yeah, people are buying the results and the outcome, and they're they're, they're buying based on how they're feeling about it. You know, yeah. we, we we buy based on how we feel. Yeah. Yep. And we buy because and the pain and want, certainty. Yeah, yeah, and you want to solve the pain because people will, will yeah. do more to avoid pain than to experience pleasure. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So where are you going? So you're going Adelaide. What what other? I know there's a link there, but what other cities are you visiting? I'm doing Adelaide, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and there'll also be an online version for the people who aren't in those cities as well. So I do a Zoom room one too. Oh, okay. So an online version of the half. That beautiful, you guys. There you go. Because I know some people yeah. from overseas, from America and Dubai, are going to watch this, uh, which are my clients. So in that in that link that we Stevie posted earlier you'll have all the options of what you can do. Um, highly recommended. I mean, as I said, I walked away only because I know my business, I didn't progress to a full-blown uh, program and I have, but even with the value that I just got at this half-day event was um, even yeah. some other things, not just the models, some things that you said were like kind of, oh, those are little cool little sayings um, that made me sort of think and I go, okay, I can talk a little bit about that on, on, on certain things and certain quotes that you, you shared. Um, I thought it was really, really well done and uh, really um, nicely organized. And um, it made a lot, a lot of sense. And I'm so glad I did. And that's why we're sitting here today, you guys. I will not uh, have anyone as a guest or someone that I recommend um, unless I have done their stuff and seen them in action, which I have with Renee. And I will be having her, guys, those of you that are authors and are watching this, she's going to be presenting for us a full 90-minute uh, presentation on this. Uh, when is it? October. Our next Inner Circle call, I'll tell you, yep, October the 8th uh, in the evening, uh, which Stuart as um, her interviewer. But we'll let her, we'll let her have the whole stage and, and spend a whole hour <laughs> and a half <laughs> With um with our inner circle authors and um and do a deeper deeper dive behind this, but certainly even ninety minutes is not enough. Go to the half day or experience the half day to have the full information. Any last and in that ninety thoughts? minutes as well, yeah, in the ninety minutes as well, we'll be able to show some slides so people actually be able to see oh, some yeah. examples of models, and it'll make a whole lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, any um, what's hi Helen, by the way. I know you're watching. 
I know. There's so many people have been here and saying hi and all that sort of stuff. So Such is um, going nuts with all the love hearts. I know, I know. I love it. It's very encouraging when you're getting all the love hearts and all that sort of stuff. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Share this, guys, if you loved it. Um, tell us, tell me your favourite quote. Do you have a favourite quote like that you like? I'll oh, for me. Um, oh. I like this one. While you're thinking, I'll tell the guys yeah. one of my favorite quotes, and I actually have it on the side of my planner, uh, the, you know, these planners that I uh, have. 2019, yeah. by the way, guys, is out and selling our hotcakes. There's half of the boxes left, and it's only September. So you better get your Amazing. hands on it. We'll post That's the awesome. link on the planner. Entrepreneurs live a few years of their life like most people won't so they can live the rest of their lives like most people can't. That's one of my all-time favourite quotes because I know those first three years, especially when you're moving and in the transition, you, you need to live your life like most people won't because it requires yeah. a lot of commitment, determination and, um, and staying power and mindset, you know, to get through the hard times but then you can live the rest, the rest of your life uh, like most people can, like you having 12 weeks off a year, um, me having four months off a year. Mine are not quite organised in the school holidays and hours because I don't like to be uh, manipulated by the school system. So I'm just going to take my kids whenever they want to go on holidays. Well, whenever I want to go on holidays. Because <laughs> I think they learn more on the road anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while they're young, you know, it's fine until they get to VCE exams, right? What's, uh, oh, what's well, then the you're going to just leave them at home and go with your hubby. <laughs> <laughs> Except if they have parties. But then my mum's going to be around watching them like a hawk. <laughs> I love it. Did you think of a quote? Um, well, look, look, for me, um, I'm just, it's kind of more one of my mottos, which is let's have fun yeah. getting shit done. Like, yeah. I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have fun doing it. I only do what I love and love what I do. And so that's kind of like my driving yeah. force in how I live my life and run my business. So, yeah, that's probably yeah. be it. I love it. And I love the thing when you go, one, two, three, you rock. You so rock. You go, <laughs> so you have to go to the half day to see that one. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time and uh, working through this live, you know, uh, actually, the first time I've gone on uh, this kind of an interview style without having too many tech issues at the start, uh, go and check out the half day link, guys. I was um, upside down at the beginning, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We turned you around. We turned you around. And, guys, next week, I believe I'll be coming to you from Brisbane. Yes, I will, because uh, I'm just trying to think if the Monday, um, um, it, it's actually a free day, so I can uh, do my live as per normal. And, um, and then I'll be... Some weeks I won't be around. So that it'll be random the next five weeks. So Helen's done Renee's program. Yes, she says Renee rocks. Which and one, two, three, you rock, Helen. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And uh, Stevie rocks. <laughs> and Stevie does rock, rock. Right? <laughs> and Nat rocks. Yeah, Nat too. Uh, Nat rocks. Uh, all right, guys. Um, awesome. And if you watch the recording, if you have any questions for Renee, post them below. Of course, uh, she's tagged into this post. She'll see them. She can always reply. Um, you know, maybe show your excite model or something in an imagery on one of the um, on the post below, so people can put kind of yeah, like I'll put, some, I'll put some images in the comments. That's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, do that, and that way people as yeah. they, they kind of get the visual, or they can revert back from what they've heard. Yeah, boom. Yeah, have an amazing but, week ahead. I'm gonna smash out tweets this week, and have a great national tour. And I'll, my guys are gonna love having you on the call on the eighth of October. Uh, as I'm well as I look forward, forward to serving your people uh, at some stage in the new year. All right, guys. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.